Pengadilan Kriminal Internasional atau ICC resmi mengajukan surat perintah penangkapan ke Perdana Menteri atau PM Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Jaksa Karim Khan mengatakan tak hanya Netanyahu, Menteri Pertahanan Israel, Yoav Galan, juga akan masuk ke daftar buruan. Keduanya melakukan tindakan yang menyebabkan kelaparan, pembunuhan yang disengaja, dan pemusnahan. Hal ini terkait perang Israel di Gaza, Palestina. Selain Netanyahu dan Galan, ICC juga mengajukan surat penangkapan untuk pemimpin Hamas. Mereka yakni pemimpin gerakan tersebut di Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, lalu pemimpin politik Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, dan ahli strategi militernya, Muhammad Teif. Sebenarnya, tidak hanya urusan Israel dan Palestina, ICC juga pernah mengeluarkan surat perintah penangkapan kepada pejabat tinggi negara. Berikut ulasannya. 1. Presiden Rusia, Vladimir Putin ICC mengeluarkan surat perintah penangkapan terhadap Presiden Rusia Vladimir Putin pada Maret 2023. Mahkamah menuduhnya melakukan kejahatan perang dengan mendeportasi ratusan anak dari Ukraina secara ilegal. Kremlin menyebut tindakan tersebut tidak ada artinya dan berulang kali membantah tuduhan bahwa pasukannya telah melakukan kekejaman selama invasi terhadap negara tetangganya. 2. Mantan Presiden Sudan, Omar Bashir ICC mengeluarkan surat perintah penangkapan terhadap Omar al-Bashir pada tahun 2009 Menduduhnya mendalangi genosida, kejahatan terhadap kemanusiaan dan kejahatan perang di wilayah Darfur, Sudan di mana diperkirakan 300.000 ribu orang terbunuh dan lebih dari 2 juta orang mengungsi Bashir dan beberapa sekutunya dipenjara di Sudan setelah pemberontakan rakyat pada tahun 2019, tetapi tidak pernah dikirim ke Den Haag. Pihak militer mengatakan mantan diktator itu dipindahkan dari penjara ke rumah sakit militer pada bulan April tahun lalu. 3. Panglima Perang Uganda, Joseph Kony Joseph Kony selaku pendiri dan pemimpin Lord Resistance Army atau LRA, adalah buronan terlama di ICC. Untuk diketahui, surat perintah penangkapan dikeluarkan untuknya pada tahun 2005. Pada saat itu, jaksa penuntut ingin menuntut Koni dengan 36 dakwaan kejahatan perang dan kejahatan terhadap kemanusiaan. Ini termasuk pembunuhan, pemerkosaan, penggunaan tentara anak-anak, perbudakan seksual, kawin paksa, dan kehamilan paksa. 4. Putra mantan pemimpin Libya, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi ICC mengeluarkan surat perintah penangkapan terhadap putra mantan Presiden Libya, Muammar Gaddafi pada tahun 2011 bersama ayahnya yang ditangkap dan ditembak pada bulan Oktober tahun itu. Beberapa hari setelah ayahnya terbunuh, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi ditangkap oleh pejuang dari Zintan di mana dia tetap ditahan sampai dia dibebaskan berdasarkan Undang-Undang Amnesti pada tahun 2017. Anehnya, jaksa ICC saat ini Karim Khan adalah pengacara muda Gaddafi di ICC selama kurang lebih satu tahun, hingga mengundurkan diri pada tahun 2018. Khan menjadi jaksa utama ICC pada tahun 2021. atau ICC alias Pengadilan Kriminal Internasional resmi mengeluarkan ajuan penangkapan untuk Perdana Menteri Israel Benjamin Netanyahu. Pengumuman tersebut disampaikan secara langsung oleh Jaksa ICC Karim Khan melalui kanal resmi ICC pada Senin 20 Mei. PM Netanyahu beserta Menteri Pertahanan Israel Yoav Galan akan didakwa atas tindakan kriminal berupa kejahatan terhadap kemanusiaan. I can also confirm today that I have reasonable grounds to believe on the basis of evidence collected and examined by my office that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant bear criminal responsibility for the following international crimes committed on the territory of the State of Palestine from at least the 8th of October 2023. The crimes include starvation of civilians as a method of warfare, willfully causing great suffering, 
serious injury to body or health or cruel treatment, willful killing or murder, and intentionally directing attacks against a civilian population. Tak hanya itu, ICC juga menelusuri jejak serangan 7 Oktober dan akan menangkap tiga orang pimpinan Hamas yang bertanggung jawab atas perang Israel dan Gaza. On the basis of evidence collected and examined and analyzed by my office, I have reasonable grounds to believe that three senior leaders of Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, Muhammad Daif, and Ismail Haniya, bear criminal responsibility for the following international crimes committed on the territory of Israel and the state of Palestine from at least the 7th of October 2023. Melansir Reuters, PM Israel Benjamin Netanyahu pun menolak dengan keras pengumuman ICC tersebut dan mengklaim Hamas sebagai kelompok pembunuh massal utamanya. Presiden Amerika Serikat Joe Biden juga menyebut sikap ICC tersebut keterlaluan dan bersumpah akan membela Israel selama proses hukum berlangsung. I can also confirm today that I have reasonable grounds to believe on the basis of evidence collected and examined by my office that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant bear criminal responsibility for the following international crimes committed on the territory of the state of Palestine from at least the 8th of October 2023. The crimes include starvation of civilians as a method of warfare, willfully causing great suffering, serious injury to body or health or cruel treatment, willful killing or murder, and intentionally directing attacks against a civilian population, as well as crimes against humanity of extermination and or murder, persecution, and allegations of crimes of committing other inhuman acts. My office submits that these individuals, through a common plan, have systematically deprived the civilian population of Gaza of objects indispensable to human survival. We have reached that conclusion based upon interviews with survivors, many eyewitnesses, experts, from satellite imagery, statements from Israeli officials, including the two individuals subject to the present application, as well as based upon several hundred authenticated videos, photographs, and audio recordings, many of which were taken and shared by victims and eyewitnesses themselves. My office charges Netanyahu and Gallant as co-perpetrators and as superiors in the commission of these alleged crimes. Israel, like all states, has the right to defend its population. It has every right to ensure the return of hostages that have been criminally and callously taken. Those rights, however, do not absolve Israel of its obligations to comply with international humanitarian law. Intentionally causing death, starvation, injury, and suffering to the civilian population, including so very many women and children, are criminal means to achieve military and political goals. That's what we allege. I have reasonable grounds to believe that three senior leaders of Hamas, Yahya Sinwa, Muhammad Daif, and Ismail Haniya, bear criminal responsibility for the following international crimes committed on the territory of Israel and the state of Palestine from at least the 7th of October, 2023. Extermination as a crime against humanity. Murder as a crime against humanity and as a war crime. The taking of hostages as a war crime. Rape and other acts of sexual violence during captivity as crimes against humanity and as war crimes. Torture during captivity as a crime against humanity and as a war crime. Other inhumane acts during captivity as a crime against humanity. Cruel treatment during captivity as a war crime. And outrageous 
upon personal dignity during captivity is a war crime. My office submits that there are reasonable grounds to believe that these three Hamas leaders are criminally responsible for the killing of Israeli civilians in attacks perpetrated by Hamas and other armed groups on the 7th of October 2023, the taking of hostages and the other crimes alleged in our applications. My office also submits today that there are reasonable grounds to believe that hostages taken from Israel, taken from their homes, taken from their communities, have been kept in inhumane conditions and that some have been subjected to horrendous sexual violence, including rape, while being held in captivity. Those who do not comply with the law should not complain later when my office takes action based upon solid evidence. That day has come. Today we underline in the clearest possible fashion that international law and the laws of armed conflict apply to everyone. No foot soldier, no commander, no civilian leader, no one can act with impunity.